Okay, so locks really ensure mutual exclusion. Okay, so then if you use locks, then you get the mutual exclusion aspect. So you get the aspect that the producer or the consumer, only one of them can manipulate the queue at any given time. Uh, but there's also the synchronization on a condition aspect. Right? So let's define the problem for it. Let's define the classes and then try to solve this problem. And then we, along the way, we'll figure out how to solve it using conditional synchronization. So I'm going to define a class bounded buffer. I have a void star buffer, uh, which is a queue of entries, so just a single dimensional array. I have a lock, which protects this buffer. Okay, so, and then I have a count, which indicates uh, how many entries are in the buffer. If count is uh, zero, then the buffer is empty, uh, right? So buffer is empty. If count is equal to n, then buffer four. So we have two conditions. And then what we're going to do is look at two functions. I'm going to call the producer a deposit function, and I'm going to call the consumer a with, uh, withdrawal function. Okay. So let's first look at take a look at the deposit. So I acquire the lock. I keep spinning, checking if the buffer is full. So I'm a producer, right? So I acquire the lock. I keep spinning. The buffer is full. And then I add an entry to the buffer. I increment the count to indicate there's one more entry in the buffer. Then I release the lock. Okay, the this is the first example solution we're going to try to use to fix this problem. And remove similarly acquires the lock. It checks until the buffer is empty. So it keeps spinning until there's at least one entry in the buffer that it can remove. Okay, and then it removes the entry from the buffer. Decrements the count to indicate that it's removed an entry and then releases the lock. So we really have two conditions. This one spins on buffer not equal to empty, and this one spills on spins on buffer equal to full. Right? So if this one's empty, then I shouldn't be able to consume anything. And as long as this is full, then I shouldn't be able to produce anything. What's wrong with this? Okay, why does this not work? The reason this solution does not work is that let's say that the buffer is full. Okay, so let's start off. You know, we the producer kept producing and then buffer uh, became full. Okay? So count equals n. The producer gets through the lock, gets to this point of the while loop, and then continues to spin in an infinite loop. Why? Because the remove will never get past this point. They're all queued up at the lock acquired, right? Because this guy has already got into this into the critical section. Now the deposit continues to spin. It's an infinite loop. He cannot run until the consumer consumes something. And the consumer cannot consume any, no consumer can consume anything because they're all stuck at the lock. Okay, so this first solution clearly does not work. So we've synchronized correctly with the lock to protect the data structure itself. But the program doesn't work because you're checking a constraint with by while holding the lock. Right? So this does not work. Let's look at another solution. So in this solution, what I've done is I have moved it outside. Okay, so I moved it outside of the lock because the initial one, the problem was that uh, that within the lock, if I continue to spin, then no one can remove anything. Okay, so moved it outside the lock, and now what the challenge is, is that let's say that I checked and the buffer was not full, so I get past this point, and I get to the lock, okay? And so let's say they were initially count was uh, n minus one, right? count equals n minus one. And we have two producers, okay? Now, I spin, get to the lock, so both producers check this condition. Both producers, both of them, so both of the threads check this condition. Both of them get to this point of the lock required. Okay? One of them gets through first, the other one's going to wait to the lock, produces. And now the condition has changed. So then when the next one is still uh, tries to run, 
right so one of them got through and essentially the count is now which was n minus 1 now becomes n right so when he finishes count is now n so the buffer has become full between the time I checked and between the time I acquired right so essentially in this case um, this was not atomic so the check and the producer right, or the deposit so check as a producer will not did not happen as one unit um, the check essentially ran and then both threads got through and then one of the threads got through and and, fin uh, and put a thing in something into the queue or a buffer and the other one in the meantime is still waiting at the lock and is completely unaware of the case that now the buffer has suddenly become full so when it tries to produce it it's going to be a bug right. so when you, this problem arises because when you have two two or more two plus producers okay so if you have more than one producer then the challenge is that between the time you checked and between the time you inserted something would have changed in our work okay so let's look at the next one so What we do is in this one we say okay so the problem is that uh, between the time I check and between the time I insert something uh, something will go wrong right so what I'm going to do is change the while to an if so if the buffer is full I go to sleep and when the buffer has at least one entry free uh, someone else will wake me up the challenge with this one is similar to the previous one if I get woken up and I'm sleeping both producers could get woken up both of them run and both their check I mean both of them start running and one of them gets through put something in the buffer the other guy also gets through and put something into the buffer right now this is bad again similar to the previous case between the time this I woke up from my sleep and between the time I acquired the lock, something changed in my world. The buffer suddenly went back to being full. Okay, so let's move the condition in here now. So if I lock and I move the condition in, it's similar to the second case where I check the condition and I go to sleep and another person also, and now I've gone to sleep holding the lock no one else can consume anything and so the whole system is dead lock, right so the problem here is that producer holds the lock um, while sleeping while sleeping right. and so the challenge is that um, in this case um, the system is dead lock. And so we don't want this either. So we don't want the case where the producer holds the lock while sleeping, which means this guy cannot even run. Okay. But the idea is good. The idea is that um, if my condition was not satisfied, I should go to sleep, right? And then someone else will wake me up if the condition does get satisfied. Except the problem was I went to sleep holding the lock. Okay. So let's try another one right so let's try the fact that I check I release and I continue right? so I go back uh, to this if the condition is full right the, initially we said the previous one the problem was that I was holding the lock while sleeping now I release the lock before I go to sleep so it should all be okay right except that essentially I could think about just the deposit system, right? So the buffer is full. I acquire the lock. I check the condition. Condition fails. I release the lock and then I continue, which means I got to go back here again and start. And I could repeat the exact same set of steps and go back again. So now I essentially could be acquiring and releasing the lock in such a short loop that no one else may get the lock which means that 
Again, remove does not run. And because it cannot get the lock, it, it's stuck here. Right? And I just keep getting into this loop without allowing anybody else to get the lock. And if I'm stuck in the loop and I'm not really doing anything useful because I can't do anything until uh, someone else does something useful and they can't do it because I keep locking, releasing and getting the lock again. And so the problem with this is that progress in general is affected. So releasing the lock after we check the condition alone is not sufficient, but you should release it and let someone else possibly run. Right? So we need both. 